In this topic, you will learn the new process of counting stock in which you can enter multiple stock count quantities, as well as how repeating counts reduces the risk of error during the stock count process. Previously, you were only able to create a single count entry. Now you can count the same stock several times and keep track of each count, including a final total for each count instance. Note that both processes are still available. Now the process is very similar to the existing one, but this time you're given the option of having multiple individual counts that are then able to be compared to determine the accuracy of the counts. Now on the count entry transaction page, you have three entry choices in the count manager pull-down menu, hidden, entered, and displayed. You now have the ability at the bottom of the page to choose multiple counts by checking the box. If this option is not chosen, you will only able, be able to choose from the options present in the previous version of the software. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the stock count process, including multiple counts. We'll start off by creating a stock count session. So we'll click New, enter the site, and then we'll also name the session. So we're going to make it an annual count. And as you can see, it's in creation. The type will be product. Our mode is going to be annual. And we'll do product on location. Maximum lines will make it um, 10. and multiple lists. And of course, our most important point is selecting the checkbox for multiple counts. On our selections, we'll do it by category and select our category. Our next step is to create. So we create our session. You can see the session has been numbered. And then we'll do our generation. On generation, we can check our list. And we can see our list has a five lines and one count sheet list. Our next step, of course, is the end of our count. So we'll go to our count function by using the jump to and select count lists. We'll select the STD or the stock count standard entry as our transaction selection. The entry transaction basically shows all the fields that have been defined under this standard um, entry. For multi-count, a few more columns have been added. You can see the allocation date the account manager one, account manager two, and the account manager columns have been added for multiple different accounts. In addition, on the lines you can see next to the status column, additional column has been added. This column only shows if you are doing multiple counts. You can see the asterisk above the column plus the plus on each line. The plus means there is a multiple count to do. If the plus changes to plus one, it means that um, count one for the account manager one is in process. If it changes to an asterisk one, it means that the count is completed for the count manager one and so forth. If it's two, then it changes to two plus two for pros progress and the asterisk 2 means it's been completed. Now when the multiple count is over, this column is emptied. Let's go ahead and start our count. 
I'll start off by removing one product from the line. So we'll have four left. So we'll go ahead and delete um, one of the products that we don't need. And then we have four lines that are left. The first thing we do is we assign the account manager. And we'll assign this the first account manager as Joey. And then we'll enter that account manager's count under the count stock one. After entering the count for Count Manager 1, we go ahead and save. Next, we enter the count for Count Manager 2. Now, prior to that, after ending, entering the count for Count Manager 1, the quantities cannot be changed. But now let's go ahead and enter for account manager two. But prior to that, take a look at the new column. You can notice that it has changed to asterisk one. The first count is complete. Now we'll do the second count. Enter in our account manager. And we'll, this account manager is Brian. And let's go ahead and enter into that particular field, our count. And we'll say instead of one, he noticed that there was actually two of that product. And after entering this count, we go ahead and save that count. Now, once I've saved count two, the quantity count is not changeable. The second count confirms the first count except for the first line, where I entered a variance of a plus one. Now, if the count one equaled the count two results, then the quantity counted is loaded with the two first count results, as you can see in the last three lines. So I will be able to enter a final count quantity of one because this is the only line with a variance between count one and count two. As you can see, the variance, if there's a variance. You notice that is only a, shows me that count the line one can be modified. All the other lines have been counted. You also notice in the right panel, there's a clear count if I wanted to reset the count and start again. So let's go ahead and enter the final count or the final count manager. And that count manager is Julian. And of course, I only need to modify line one. And then we save. And as you can see, the status has changed to counted. And in the additional column with the asterisk, it has cleared. Now I can make modifications on the final count until it has been validated. Once it's validated, I can't make any changes. 
Let's go ahead and run a list report before validating. So I select the printer, select list, and the report we're going to run is a brand new report, which is the INVBORA report. In this report, if you take a look at the uh, stock line selection, you have multiple different options that you can actually select here. There's all that allows you to print all lines um, counted, which allows you to only print the lines counted in final count. To be counted allows you to print the lines to be counted. Accounted with variance also to print only the lines with the variance between one and count two. Also, there's count one, I can, which of course prints count one, or count two, which prints count two. Let's go ahead and select all and do a print. And we can take a look at our report and see the results. Next, we'll go ahead and click complete the process by doing our validation and our closing. Now that it's been closed, cannot be modified again. Last but not least, let's go ahead and take a look at a, a stock movement inquiry to show the movement and the changes uh, regarding stock. We'll go ahead and enter our site. A little bit of modification of the inquiry. And we can see the different changes that have actually been made for the movement. So you can see how the multiple stock counts reduces the risk of error doing stock count process. You have learned in this topic the setup involving the multiple count sessions, also the new process to create multiple counts, and also how to register multiple counts through various count managers.